Honda has finally brought a plug-in hybrid of its CRV to the United States, but it's not the one you were expecting. We're going to talk about the fuel cell plug-in hybrid CRV today. Man, I would love to have a gasoline plug-in hybrid as well. So let's get into it. <laughs> Over at the Honda press room, they have just revealed the 2025 CRV E fuel cell electric vehicle. And this is the first plug in hybrid American fuel cell vehicle ever. Okay. So they, they got the, the claim to fame there, but I don't think it's a vehicle anyone is uh, asking for. In fact, hundreds if not thousands or tens of thousands of people are asking for a plug-in hybrid of its already excellent CRV hybrid. Sounds like we're going to have to wait quite a bit longer. And we'll talk more about a CRV plug-in hybrid with a gasoline engine on the second half of this video. But in the first half, I'm going to break down some of the details on this CRV plug-in hybrid fuel cell. Uh, they call it the E fuel cell electric vehicle. It has a 270 mile EPA range, still delivering impressive power, cabin space, and cargo capacity. Well, hopefully we get information on actually how much power it produces. Yes, here we go. So we have a single motor with 174 horsepower, that's less than what we have on the CRV hybrid, which is 204 horsepower. It has 229 pound feet of torque, which I believe is also less than the CRV hybrid, which has around 248, somewhere around there. Um, so it's not quite as quick in theory compared to the hybrid, which is going to be a lot lighter. This again has a big plug in hybrid battery, as well as the fuel cell stack and tanks to keep that hydrogen in. Hey, I want to get into the pictures too, because this breaks down a, a nice little diagram of what's going on here. Plug-in hybrid battery right here. We got two big hydrogen fuel cell tanks uh, to store the hydrogen in. And then you have your fuel cell stack up front, which kind of replaces where the engine would be. And a plug-in hybrid CRV, these two tanks would be gone, which would give you more interior space and more cargo space in theory, right? You still have maybe a little bit more piping for exhaust. Notice that there is no exhaust piping or tunneling going on here since there is no exhaust. Fuel cell stacks only emit water. It's pretty insane. But we also have different styling to the front end to the, to the CRV. Maybe this is what the refreshed CRV could look like. Do you guys like it? Definitely has a a larger front end. And I feel like this is actually taking some cues from the new refreshed uh, Civic, the Civic Hybrid coming out. We got images of that. So I'll overlay the Civic Hybrid. There are definitely some similarities, I feel like, with this area. The interior looks pretty similar here compared to the CRV. I haven't been in a CRV in a while, but same technology it looks like, except the range, the range is not gasoline range, it's hydrogen range. You have the fuel cell tank. And then you also have, uh, well, it has a battery, right? It says 22 miles left on the battery. I think the EPA range here is 29 miles of electric range and about 270 miles of full range when you combine the hydrogen and the electric. Oh, should I say electric from the battery because the hydrogen produces electric. So what the, the, the irony here is that there's so few hydrogen fuel stations in the United States you will only be able to buy this, I would assume, in California. And if even if it has 270 miles of range, you really only have half of that because you would have to turn around halfway and fuel up again. Before I get too ahead of myself, I went ahead and looked it up. So you have a bunch of stations here. So let's say you have this CRV fuel cell. You can, and you're in LA, right? If you're outside of LA, you should not be getting a fuel cell vehicle. Maybe if you're in San Francisco, you could go down to San Diego, no problem, right? And I did the math here. If you filled up at the Mission Hills station and you went all the way up to this Harris Ranch Resort, it's only about 177 miles. And let's say it's about 150 miles to San Jose where you'll have more Char or I want to say charging stations because it's ingrained, but it's uh, fuel cell refilling stations, whatever you want to call it, fuel hydrogen filling stations. There we go. Once you you know refill back up here in Silicon Valley, you'd be able to fill up in Sacramento and go all the way up to Tahoe area with fuel cell. So if all you do is drive in this part of California, 
then you know, this vehicle actually might work. But God forbid one of them goes offline because there's a few offline. One in San Diego is down. That's not convenient. Imagine owning a fuel cell in, Cal uh, in San Diego and Car around Carmel Valley. And then you realize, oh, crap, like it's, it's offline. So you would have to drive all the way down here to Savita Park. And wow, that would not be convenient. Um, also, so like it is, if you just drive around LA, then it's not a problem. Okay. And that's, I guess that's really the only feasibility, but Hey, at least you can make it up to the Bay area. You can make it to Sacramento, assuming could you, could you imagine you're planning your trip and you get to Sacramento or, you know, out here in Lake Tahoe and one of these stations isn't working. You're done. You're dead in the water. Like, yes, you can plug in, but that will only give you 30 miles. So it's just, it's really meant for city driving in and around the Bay Area or LA. If you're real, like, honestly, if I lived in that area and had tons of cash to spend with my YouTube channel, maybe I would take a long trip and lease this guy to see what it's like, right? To, to have a CRV. I call it a plug-in hybrid because that's how it works in my brain, but it's a, it's a plug-in fuel cell. But in my head, fuel cells are all are, are all hybrids because they use a battery as well as the hydrogen stack. So, anyways, it is feasible for Central and Southern California with only 270 miles of range. And let's keep moving. It's just you know, it's definitely a showcase of technology here and potentiality in the future. But really, what they what most of us would want is have this vehicle as a plug-in hybrid gas vehicle, right? Because there's gas stations everywhere and it's afford gas is relatively affordable. And then you can still use the 30 miles or so of electric range for your city driving. I think this trim is here, this um, hexagonal honeycomb uh, beehive sort of trim right below the vents. I think that might be new here for the fuel cell. And then I don't see a, a sunroof on here either, but the interior looks very familiar. Um, looks like there's a sport mode, so you can tap into the 170 horsepower. Or so pretty basic interior, and that's what Hondas are good for. Wow, cargo space, rest in peace. Holy smokes, look at that, you know, that's one of the detractors of fuel cell. Okay, well, you know, they're like, hey, we, we came up with this smart design to be able to put a shelf in there so you can maximize the verticality a little bit better. So I do like that. Is this running an air conditioner? from the vehicle, that's, I guess that's what it's doing. We have it uh, powering this little projector here, a um, little vehicle to load action, which is great. That's something to look forward to with their plug-in hybrid gas models in the future as well. Here it is charging with a little Honda charger at a very nice house. Here it is charging at a hydrogen station. This is different as well. This little black glossy piece, I don't remember seeing on the current CRVs and the lights instead of being red, They've given it like that Euro taillight design from the, the 90s and 2000s tuner crowd, and they've completely like chromified or silverified the rear taillight area. Still probably have incandescent bulbs here for the blinkers. I remember that being less than ideal. And then E, fuel cell electric vehicle. This is interesting because Honda's hybrids, they don't call them EHEV. In Europe, they call their hybrids EHEV. Maybe this is a vehicle they're going to also export to Europe be, to make the most of this naming. The Civic, uh, the Civic Hybrid that's coming out this summer just says hybrid. It doesn't say EHEV like the Vezel does, for example, in other markets um, has the EHEV. So it looks like a CRV. Just this portion is a lot bigger. It's more like largemouth bass. Let me know if you guys like it compared to... So I just paused it on a, a little intro video for the CRV. I, you know, I'm liking, I'm liking the current design better than this uh, enlarged grill here. You know, they've actually switched out quite a bit now that I'm looking at it. Previously, the grill flowed straight from the headlights. Now they've, they've given it a top grill and a bottom grill. So there's a lot more grill going on here. And I think the current CRV looks a lot better. What do you guys think? Wheels look to be about the same. They have quite a bit of media here on this fuel cell. We know uh, this fuel cell stack is made in the United States. It's actually a joint venture with General Motors with this next-gen fuel cell stack. All right, they still plan on being 100% 
electric, whether that's fuel cell or battery electric, by 2040. If you guys think Honda will do that here in the United States, uh, comment down below. If you don't, also comment down below. The vehicle to load um, is 1,500 watts. If you guys want to read more about Honda Hydrogen business, I'll go ahead and put this link in the description for you to check out. But 174 horsepower, 229 pound-feet of torque, and the, the fuel cell I can output 92 kilowatts of power. And 92 kilowatts is roughly 123 horsepower. So that fuel cell stack can directly power the motor, but they'll get additional juice from the battery pack in there to make up the difference to a full 174 horsepower. Um, if the bat if you're in full battery electric mode, I would assume you still have access to the 174 horsepower as well. So your performance doesn't change regardless of whether you're running on pure battery electric or on a fuel cell. You'll still get the exact same performance here. It's a 17.7 kilowatt hour battery. Um, let's see anything else of noteworthiness here. I don't I don't think so, honestly. We know we have smaller wheels here, 18 inches, in order to provide the greatest range and efficiency as possible. Something to consider as well is that Toyota's Mirai, I know it's a sedan, they are able to get a lot more range out of it being a, a not a plug-in hybrid, just a normal hybrid fuel cell. Um, so I'm going to look up Mirai range, 350 to 400, and they hyper-miled it and were able to get like 600, but way more range here compared to the CRV. I know it's a sedan compared to a crossover, but something to consider here. You know, in Europe, they sell the CRV hybrid and a plug-in hybrid CRV as well. Again, here in the United States, we have a turbo CRV and a CRV hybrid. And the CRV hybrid is no doubt the way to go, in my opinion. Toyota has the plug-in hybrid, not only the little Prius, but also of the RAV4. They call the RAV4 Prime. And that goes from about 219 horsepower on the hybrid to about 300 and two horsepower on the plug-in hybrid. So you get a nice performance boost. It doesn't look like Honda gives you any sort of performance boost with the plug-in hybrids. And I think that's why it could be delayed here in the United States, the CRV plug-in hybrid, because in terms of performance, it just doesn't keep up with the RAV4 hybrid. But I think it does well probably in performance against something like the, the Tucson plug-in hybrid. But again, the Tucson hybrid still, in my opinion, can't keep up with the RAV4 hybrid either. The plug-in hybrid has 596 miles of full hybrid range and 50 miles of pure electric driving range. Okay, so a lot more than 30 in the United States. I know it's different fuel economy measuring metrics. It's probably WLTP over in Europe. So these miles would be greatly diminished. Let me just estimate it real quick for you guys. And this is going to be a rough estimate. 596 divided by 1.14. Uh, so you still could potentially have over 500 miles of plug-in hybrid range, including your gasoline range, right? And then 50 miles of pure EV, uh, which is about 43 miles of electric range, which is great. The problem is it only has 180 horsepower. And so in nine seconds, zero to 62, where the the RAV4 Prime does about a six second, zero to 62. The performance is just a completely different league. In terms of efficiency, it seems to be pretty close though to the RAV4 Prime. And check out the front end of this CRV. This design is quite a bit different than ours. This looks like a Civic front end, really similar, right, to a Civic front end that we currently have, not the refresh that we're getting in a little bit. And I like it quite a bit. Do I like it better than this CRV styling that we have on our hybrids here? I, I would be happy with either, actually. I think they both look pretty good. So let me know down below if you would like to have the CRV plug in hybrid in this shape and form here in the United States. Um, obviously, this fuel cell, it's, I don't know, it's a, sh it's a technological showcase. That's how I see it for Honda. To me, it's just, it's not, it's not practical, right? There's no fuel cells charging stations anywhere, or should I say refueling hydrogen stations anywhere. I would still be pretty happy if Honda had this in the United States, even though it can't compete with the RAV4 Prime. It would still be great to have more plug-in hybrid options in this midsize SUV segment. What do you guys think? I'm hoping that the reason why they've delayed this though for the United States and the North American market, this plug-in hybrid, is because they need to get more horsepower out of this. 
They need to get at least 60 more horsepower or something in order to make it competitive against the RAV4 Prime on all fronts. They already seem to be there with efficiency. Now they need to get there with performance. And this is Honda we're talking about. Honda typically does performance pretty well. And if you have a top of the line plug-in hybrid and it is slower than the normal hybrid, that is inexcusable when you're paying more money. It needs to be better in every single regard, right? Or close to. And having that performance drop is not going to be the game changer they need it to be or the competitive car they need it to be against the RAV4 Prime. Because you know the Koreans aren't sleeping either with their plug-in hybrids. With that being said, let me know what kind of specs you would like to see on a Honda CRV plug-in hybrid that uses gasoline, not hydrogen. Um, let me know what you want to see from it in the future. And uh, it's probably, I know it's coming. When is just a big question mark. I think 300 horsepower is where they need to be and 40 miles of electric range minimum. And then, you know, cruising range of at least 500 miles as well. Is that too much to ask? Absolutely not, because that already exists as the RAV4 Prime. So they need to at least hit those marks. So I'm going to end it there. I want more uh, CRV stuff coming down the hatch. So I'm excited to bring this to you two guys to an extent, right? It's more of a teaser to let us know, hey, we, we do plug-in hybrids on the CRV, one in Europe with the gasoline, one in the United States, but with hydrogen, and you can't really have any of them. So anyways, I'll see you guys in the comments down below. Um, I will be driving some new Hondas here soon and Acuras. I will be driving the new ZDX, so stay tuned for that. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe for more, and have a great day. Peace.